Joining us now from New York City, Bill Bennett, host of Bill Bennett's Morning in America, and Seth Liebson, the producer of the nationally syndicated radio show. They are out with a brand new book, The Fight of Our Lives, which looks at the war against Muslim extremism. Thank you so much to you both for being here. You bet. Well, in the book, you sound the alarm against the threat of radical Islam and the threat that it poses to America. Bill, what is your assessment of how President Obama is handling this threat? Not well. Um, the main responsibility of a president of the United States is to keep the country safe and is to identify the threats that we have and to um, make plain to the citizenry what, what we must do to protect ourselves. There's been a failure of this administration to describe the nature of this threat, whether it's Eric Holder, the attorney general, or the president, there is a reluctance to talk about Islamic extremism. This is, uh, this is uh, due to an uh, unnecessary sensitivity to people's uh, religious uh, sensitivities. We understand Isla Islam is a religion, a legitimate religion. Most American Muslims uh, are loyal to America, but there is a problem uh, with radical Islam, and it needs to be stated plainly and simply. Seth, you write in the book about how Islamic extremists use political correctness against us. Tell us about that and what our government should be doing about it. Certainly. Well, you see it in all levels. First of all, we start off in the fight of our lives talking about how Fort Hood came to be. Nidal Hassan, major in the U.S. Army, trained in America, educated in America, and he spoke in America about his intentions to commit jihad. He spoke about pouring hot oil down the throats of unbelievers. He t spoke about killing infidels, and no one wanted to say anything because they were afraid they would be called bigots or they would put at risk of their careers. You see it at the university level, where professors are brought in who have very troubling pasts and have written in Arabic support for Hamas and Hezbollah, but the academies want to ignore that because they believe, as does the Army Chief of Staff in the United States, that diversity is more important than life. These are the policies that need to be looked at, and I think political correctness has to be torn down, because if not, we will be. All right. Well, it, what are the consequences for the average American if the administration fails to address this threat, Dr. Bennett? Well, I think the American people are in many ways, many of them, uh, ahead of the administration on these questions. Uh, but um, there is a problem of people being lulled into a sense of security and not being alert and not being aware of what's happening. Right after 9-11, we formed an organization called Americans for Victory Over Terrorism. And people said, what do you need that for? And we said to fortify public opinion. Skeptics said, well, I don't, that'll never flag. That We'll never lose that. Well, we've lost some of it. And with it, we've lost some alertness and some attention. We have been saved, frankly, by the alertness of some citizens, uh, by the alertness of some law, uh, law enforcement officials. But look at these close calls we have had in Times Square, uh, the Detroit uh, airport. Uh, and other places. And, and sadly, we didn't have a close call. We lost it in, uh, at Fort Hood uh, and in a recruiting station in Arkansas and other places. So uh, there's a deadly cost to not taking this issue seriously and for our leadership not to tell us exactly what it is we're facing. Now, a few weeks ago, New York Republican Peter King held a controversial House hearing to look at the radicalization of American Muslims. Tuesday, Senator Dick Durbin, Democrat from Illinois, conducted a hearing on protecting the civil rights of American Muslims. Bill, who is right here? Uh, well, uh, it's perfectly fine for both of them to have hearings, but uh, you're not going to hear the charges of McCarthyism uh, laid against, made against uh, Dick Durbin as they were made against Peter King. Peter King is exactly right to talk about the question of the attempt to radicalize American Muslim youth. Do you know, does, your, does the audience realize that right now in the world at large, three of the major leaders of al-Qaeda in the world were either born or raised in the United States of America? That's a frightening thing to hear. But uh, we nurtured uh, three leaders of al-Qaeda International. Bill, the president says he wants Gaddafi out, then he strikes militarily. Now he says in his speech he's really not interested in regime change. What message do you think he's sending? Confused, confused message. But let's tie it to the message of the book, The Fight of Our Lives. In, in the last 20 years, we have gone into eight countries, always with the same purpose, to liberate Muslims. Uh, in the last 20 years, that's what we've been doing. We have been, the United States, the greatest force to, for the liberation, freedom of the people of the Islamic faith the world has ever seen. So back to this question of Islamophobia, we are, frankly, the salvation of many Muslims. We were in Iraq, uh, we are in Afghanistan and elsewhere, and possibly maybe in, um, uh, in Libya and, and who, knows, who knows what other places. But I'm afraid that message is confused, and I wish the president, when he had said 
that uh, he thought Gaddafi ought to go would take the steps uh, until Gaddafi was gone. Alexander Hamilton said, "When this uh, country moves militarily, it should move like Hercules, not like um, not like Gulliver." Seth, do you think Obama has shifted U.S. policy away from our ally Israel toward the Muslim world? Oh, I don't think there's any question about it. When you look at what he did in his first year in office, when he went to uh, Arabia, uh, Saudi Arabia, when he went to Egypt, when he uh, gave interviews on Arabic networks, he was making a very clear statement. When he treated Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel uh, like a second-class state citizen visitor uh, and, and would do no press, press uh, forums with him, yes, there's no question a signal was sent, and I think it has many Israelis worried. The problem is it has many of our enemies, particularly Iran, rubbing their hands because they see weakness by the United States and they see appeasement by the United States. If it's not willing to stand up for Israel, I'm not so sure they think it's not willing to stand up for itself. Now, Bill, you served two presidents, education secretary under Reagan and drug czar under Bush 41. Could you care, compare and contrast Reagan's approach to communism with Obama's approach to radical Islam? Yeah, uh, Reagan was clear. Um, and direct, um, and uh, as he said, his strategy was, we win. Um, and um, Barack Obama's strategy seems to be so far, um, we'll muddle through, we'll dither, uh, we'll maybe do the right thing occasionally, but maybe too late, uh, and we want to be sure no one thinks uh, that we think we're anything special. Uh, I prefer the Reagan approach. All right. Again, the book is The Fight of Our Lives, available on Amazon.com and bookstores everywhere. Bill Bennett and Seth Leibson, congratulations on the book. It's a fantastic read, and thanks so much for being here today. Nicely done, Kathleen. Thank you very much.